culture is I want my three hours back. I was watching it and passing while enjoying glorious hockey being played, but goddammit, this game was a waste of my time. The only positive to seeing it unfold was hearing Al Michaels slowly wither and die as it went on. It was as bad as advertised. Hopefully we'll get a good Thursday game the same time Justin Fields doesn't completely miss on an easy throw. Meanwhile, Carson Wentz is simulating his career trajectory by throwing everything away. But then you have Brian Robinson. Dude went from being shot trying to fend off a carjacking less than two months ago to starting at running back for Washington. Him scoring a touchdown was one of the only bright spots of this game. How else would you tolerate the constant fuck-ups by both teams? Chicago self-destructing so badly that the commies somehow have the lead. But then again, the one thing that always fucks them up is the human element. Joey Sly is an insanely inaccurate kicker. And Washington's defense is insanely overrated. Chicago somehow has a chance to win with seconds left. Crazy, I know. Fake toss to the end zone, and it is juggled. Did he catch it? Fucking up the fourth down conversion because you didn't have possession at the goal line. That's a fitting way to end this shit fest. Perhaps this is the dirt that Dan Snyder was talking about when he speaks of taking the league down with him. Do it, Dan. We will dance in the flames of chaos. Great tank of the Texans rolls on with haste. They've had some hiccups on the ride, particularly with an accidental win against Jacksonville, but their Super Bowl has already been celebrated. Jack Easterby was crucified for his many sins. Perhaps his evangelical power healed Derek Carr after an injury scare. In this version of Tank Bowl, we have a surprising offensive showcase. One where Josh Jacobs destroys whatever the Texans call a defense. However, the game is still neck and neck. The deciding factor in these matchups is a simple one. Who wants to lose more? Fortunately for Houston, the Raiders still fancy themselves as playoff contenders. The tank of tanks remains strong. And it will be confirmed by a tasty pick six cooked up to Duran Harmon. Another scare for Las Vegas results in their continued survival for another week. Just don't know if it'll be enough to get anywhere close to a playoff spot. Was it worth it to try to skin the Patriots alive? No. Is witnessing Josh McDaniels butcher every single thing about the game of football what you imagined when you hired him? Because in Raider Nation, it's become a way of life. A lifestyle that allows you to piss away three score leads like they're nothing. Who cares if it's against Jacksonville? This is the third time they've done this in 2022. What is game plan adjustment? What is offensive cohesion? I don't care if you have the best defense in the world. If your offense keeps shooting three and outs every drive, the D will wear down over time. Jags were dead to rights riding a five-game losing streak, yet they magically rose like a phoenix. Trevor Lawrence was suddenly making the throws everyone expects him to make, and led Jacksonville to 20 unanswered points. Las Vegas used up all their luck and good fortune last year. Back to the cold reality of being irrelevant in the NFL landscape. And it's their own damn fault for it. Rich Passaccia may not have led them back to the playoffs, but he'd have done a much better job than this. There may be a time where this matchup isn't a guaranteed tank bowl. It was fringe at this point, to be fair. Detroit did end up beating Green Bay by the grace of God. And Chicago is Justin Fields. And that's pretty much it. Against the Lions, this should be good enough to win, however. The man is single-handedly carrying the Bears to some form of relevance. And he shifted public perception on his career faster than he evades tacklers in the pocket. Nope. Matt Nagy tried his best to ruin him, but like most other things he did as a coach, he failed. The electric field shocked Detroit to secure a 14-point lead in the second half. Things are in cruise control as the Motor City has no answers. Chicago capitalizes with a crucial pick to... 
This is hands to the face? These refs need their joysticks recalibrated because they just gifted the Lions a touchdown. Fields would counter, but he decided to take the Kyler Murray comparisons a little too literally if you get my draft. Tie ball game on a pick six. Chicago then unleashes the gamut of their might. Mostly in Justin Fields running for his damn life and somehow scoring points out of it. He's that fucking rabbit in Super Mario 64, you can't catch him. Don't ask Cairo Santos to help. He's going to shake the extra point wide. Things get eerily quiet in the Windy City, but then someone blinks. It's the Bears. Their defense folds like a deck of cards. The Lions march down the field for a touchdown and stun the world by kicking an extra point through the uprights. It then turns into Justin Fields versus the world. The world crushes him on the first push. The Lions laugh to the bank by winning their first road game in two seasons. Really? Almost two years? Jesus, that's pathetic. This game became a tank bowl throughout the week. Indy chucking Jeff Saturday out there to be a yes man for Jim Ursay. Ordered to his death by starting... Matt Ryan? Wait, I thought they killed him off. Ursay was the one that forced that move to begin with. And now he's going to parade himself as the hero despite being a fool. Be fortunate they're playing a coach that fucked them over in a past life. Remember that Josh McDaniels was supposed to be Indy's coach. Before he slithered back to New England after a matter of days. I said at the time that the Colts dodged a bullet. Today we see why. The Raiders are having trouble dispatching one of the biggest shit shows in football. The cackling you're hearing is coming from Colorado. Although that could be from trying to cope with the horrors of Broncos country. Jonathan Taylor promptly escaped from the horrors of his offensive slump with a game rivaling his might in 2021. Las Vegas is only down by five in the fourth without Renfro or Waller, but really? This is the answer to your critics? You're failing against a head coach who was an ESPN analyst last week and an AI-generated offensive play caller named Parks Frazier. In your own house? No wonder why Blake Martinez just said fuck it and retired instead of suffer. Dear God, if the Raiders lose this game, they shouldn't just wallow in shame. They should contract the franchise. <laughs> This is a breakthrough in the sports ball era. The first tank bowl where both teams have no control of their first round pick. Also, we had a team go from tank bowl to Super Bowl last year, but not Super Bowl to tank bowl. Rams are so apathetic and disinterested in their lot that it's become reality. If you look at this match against the Saints, you'll see why. They are cooked. Not even a nice medium rare, but those completely charred remnants that get caught underneath the grill. No. The group's so checked out that they'll make Andy Dalton look like an all-pro. His throws to Chris Olave were effortless with how little resistance the Rams gave them. Matthew Stafford was back, thanks for asking. He'd be knocked out of the game with another concussion. Unfortunately, John Wolford was out with injury as well. LA must throw Bryce Perkins into the fire to burn alive. Rams, it's over. You can't beat the Aints, it's time to pack it in. Sean McVay is slowly dying alive with this failure. It's like they're back in 2016 again. Daniel Hackett has been a dead man walking since week one. What's that, Mr. Walton? Be forced to give up play calling since I'm overmatched as a head coach? Where do I sign up? Little does he know that the Broncos aren't cash poor like Mark Davis is. He will accept his lavish buyout like a man. It's probably gonna come sooner rather than later. People willingly watched this game in person. They spent actual money to watch the Broncos offense ride the stadium into a black hole. The Raiders welcome you into this horrible abyss. 
as this is how the match ended up. Terrible offense being laid to waste at the hands of defensive might. At least we can say this about the Broncos' defense imitating the 77 Falcons. The Raiders, though? Uh, against Denver, maybe? It turned into a battle of the field goal. The end zone is a sacred land. Its virgin grass cannot be contaminated by human feet. It's a place where the only touchdowns are scored in the first half. And the misery doesn't end there. Overtime awaits. Because it's a fitting punishment for our arrogance. The fortunate thing is the torture is brief before we are put to our death. Big to Jacobs. Carr loads up. Adams is open. Walk-off touchdown. A sweep of the Broncos for Las Vegas. A hilarious outcome. Las Vegas wins a game and fucks up their crafted tank for their next quarterback. The Broncos still can't solve the intricacies of scoring more than 16 points in a game. The only real winner in this match was Seattle. They went from laughing stock to laughing at all of us in three months. How the turntables. Every time someone says that the Denver Broncos have reached rock bottom, I have to laugh. Have you people not realized that this is a bottomless pit? The Broncos can only go lower from here. Against a team that's been destroyed since week five, they were absolutely outclassed in all phases of play. Russell Wilson was hailed as a savior by myself included. Week after week, he has shown us to be a false prophet. A deceiver of the common man as he turns water into corrosive acid. Chef Russ is indeed a talent. It takes a good bit to be outplayed by Sam Darnold. Broncos country was convincingly ushered out of the stadium in the first goddamn half. The Panthers just needed positive steps, and this was one of them. Remember, it can and will get much worse than this, Denver. The defense is yelling at Wilson, and Hackett wouldn't know if a fucking nuclear explosion's going off. That first you're giving to Seattle looks more and more appetizing with every passing week. Eyes aren't deceiving you. The Packers in a tank bowl? Are you out of your mind? Well, before this game, Green Bay had a top 10 pick in the draft. This is a tank bowl. Don't tell them that, though. They still want to foolishly believe a playoff berth is still within striking distance. Fortunately for them, guess where they are? Their vacation home in the heart of Chicago. Every time the Packers stare in the face of hell or fail in January, there's always the warm embrace of their hated rival to the south. They only have Justin Fields being sent out to carry an entire freight liner to victory or die trying. I will say he's doing his best attempt in doing so. The Bears have a really strong lead headed into the half, but then you remember. Aaron Rodgers owns Chicago. Long after life on this planet is dead. Long after the sun is burned out. Long after our memories and traditions are merely dust drifting across the cold abyss of space. Aaron Rodgers will defeat the Bears pulled out the whip from his bag of bullshit and started beating people with it. Be comforted, Chicago, your tank is still secure. Their reward is the cold, bitter death of elimination. Been a while since we had one of these. Let's get it started with a bag. Or shall I say a crack? Kyler Murray, congratulations. Your season's been a nightmare and it's only going to get worse. He was merely the appetizer. The insatiable grass in Arizona claimed many bodies today. However, that wasn't enough for the gods' bloodlust. What they really wanted was the Cardinals yeah. franchise as a whole. Witnessing them in this decrepit state, chucking Colt McCoy with a playbook built no, around no, Kyler no. just proved that they are useless. The franchise is literally dead. Devoid of any hope, motivation, hunger, or logic whatsoever. This isn't even slander. The whole team is simply going through the motions to cash a paycheck. New England, shitty offense and all put up 20 unanswered points against them. It's pretty easy to do when you're up against a team as poorly coached as Arizona is. The Pats looked like they were back in their dynasty days. All that to get back to a playoff spot. 
Pretty impressive when only one side of the ball works. I'd like to close with a joke. Five-year extensions for Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury. The less said about this slog, the better. Both starting QBs are out. So Denver must ride to battle with Brett Rippon under center against Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy was knocked out of the game early due to a concussion. If Arizona wasn't enough of a meme already, the man under center is now Trace McSorley. Now, only if Broncos country could face the Cardinals every week, they'd not only be able to win, but score more than 16 points in a fucking game. It only goes to show how completely dead Arizona is as a franchise. Not only losing to a walking punchline in the league, but already starting to see the foundations unravel. Cardinal Thanos has taken an indefinite leave of absence due to health issues, and will probably be snapped out of existence with a shred of dignity as a result. They foolishly thought that bringing in a failed college coach would jolt them out of a dark age. It's only made things worse. I figured this was going to be a weak year for the cards, but this is outright pathetic. I think the NFL expected these two teams to have much better records when they scheduled this. All of these Christmas games were awful. But since neither team has their top draft picks, we can at least have a spirited matchup. Well, at least one of these disappointments managed to show up. If you merely looked at this game, you'd think that the Rams were still in Super Bowl four. That's how bad Denver was. It wasn't even a situation of bad luck. The whole team got destroyed by LA's sloppy seconds. Russell Wilson went from a star acquisition to being roasted by Patrick Starr on the Nickelodeon broadcast. Yes, children were subjected to this horror. Quite possibly the worst performance of his career. And might be the worst game in Broncos history. The team's out of sorts. The players are fighting each other on the sidelines. Nathaniel Hackett staring into a void as the foundations burn to the ground. The team is utterly routed. Everything is lost. Critical mission failure. As I said, never say you've hit rock bottom, because there's always a way to go lower. The Broncos are proof of that. They're not just in darkness, they're in advanced darkness. At least Nathaniel Hackett lives up to the first syllable of his last name. The more time passes, the narrative that he was merely brought in to lure Aaron Rodgers to Denver gains more and more credence. We all knew he was getting fired at the end of the year. But Broncos Brass saw how terrible the team was against the totally destroyed Rams and just sent him on his permanent vacation early. They were humiliated on a national stage nearly every week. Hackett didn't just lose the locker room. Players openly defied him within earshot. A piss poor leader offering nothing of value. Ruining everything he touched, completely overmatched in all aspects. This guy was hailed as an offensive genius yet was so offensive that he had Broncos fans yearning for Pat Shermer. Be honest, this dude should have been fired after week one. How he butchered the game clock and play calling against the Seahawks was legendary incompetence. And quite possibly jackknifed their entire season. They hired a game planning manager for him in week three and he gave up play calling a month ago. The fuck do you do here, man? Hackett was far from the only problem in Denver, but they had to make a move. They're locked into Russell Wilson. He's regressed to a hollow shell of himself physically. You have to figure out something there. Time has revealed Hackett to be nothing more than a thinner Freddy Kitchens. And that guy at least managed to coach a full season. He's not just Lol Cow of the Week, he's Lol Cow of the Goddamn Year. Nathaniel couldn't hack it whatsoever. Lame pun? Well, he's a shit coach, so it fits. <laughs> look at this matchup and see a pointless no. game. You wonder how David Blau is able to start a football game in the year of our Lord 2023. Yet I implore you to give this matchup some love. Both of these franchises may be dead in the water, but the glories of draft position are at stake. Auditions for next year's team are underway with haste. Jobs are on the line with every second that ticks. The dreams of an NFL career are being forced to update your resume. 
For you see, there is much that is meaningful in these kinds of affairs. It wasn't the prettiest game in the world, but it was played. And in the end, it's all that matters. What happened in it is unimportant. All you need to know is that field goals were kicked. And Atlanta pulled away in the end on a walk-off young way coup dagger. Even when there's nothing at stake, the Cardinals are still useless. Fire Cliff Kingsbury last week. It may be another ugly loss to lose 10 in a row, but there's no turning back now. They need to look to another matchup for Glory's Unseen. The Super Tank Bowl! Now this is a matchup for the ages. A tank bowl that can alter the course of history. And both teams are eager to see their teams lose for selfish reasons. Why else would Indianapolis hire an ESPN analyst as coach and start Sam Ellinger at QB? It certainly isn't to make themselves look good, I'll say that. Houston merely wants to tank for great justice. And are rumored to be firing everyone again because... I really don't know. The Texans are just a clown car disguised as a football team. Part of me feels like Lovey Smith is trying to stick it to the organization by trying to make him this year's David Cully. Oh, you're gonna fire me? Not until I take a pound of flesh in return! That retribution would be in pushing the Texans to an early lead by means of General Mills. And a Sam Ellinger picks six, but beggars can't be choosing. However, the tides of war would turn, mainly with another pick six. They remembered their tank was real. That failure would be swift and justifiable, for the glories of the number one pick are in sight. Indianapolis will be gifted their second win in the Saturday era, and the glories of the tank of tanks will be rewarded. Hey, Texans, the real war has been won. There's no need to push the ball down the field. Houston, no. The executives want you to tank. Texans, wait, don't. You're going the wrong way. You're going to drive yourselves up the cliff. Stop. Stop. Mills buying some time, fires towards the end zone, and it is caught. Oh, my word. Improbable. Oh, my God. Lovey Smith is so pissed that he's giving the team the middle finger. He's going for two. He wants to win. Play Watch Akins right there. Lines up outside, comes inside. Watch him over the middle. Who will pick first in the draft? Mills to the end zone. It's caught. Akins. You fools. You had everything you could have wanted and then some. This reeks of sabotage. In no coach's right mind should he destroy a glorious tank unless he wants to burn every bridge possible. Worse, it was against Indianapolis, who needs a franchise QB, and is able to move up to the fourth selection. It's a disaster for Houston. But then again, Lovey was the head coach of the Bears at one time. And with this Texans win and their horrible time, a new champion appears at the 11th hour. With pride, may I introduce to you the winners of the 2022 Tank Bowl, the Chicago Bears! May the Hall of Graphics you receive from a QB-hungry team be plentiful and robust.